Happy New Year to everybody out there. My name's Chris Guthridge, and these are my top 10 games from 2016. My number 10 for this year is Hyperlight Drifter. Did you play this game? I did not, Crispy. So I don't play bullshit. It's pretty fucking good, actually. I really enjoyed it. Um, let, me, let me get... Let me... Let me uh, deal with the elephant in the room real quick. Okay. How much is this game? Uh, I think if you buy it at full price, it's like 20 bucks. Holy shit. Yeah, you know, it's... I know, it's, it's a lot of money to, <laughs> to drop on a, on a particularly wonderful game, but... Uh, you know, you know, you know why this game really resonated with me this year, Carlos. Right. I, I played it earlier in the year, and and it was fun, but it wasn't quite doing it for me, so I walked away. And then, and then later on in the year, I played through and I beat Legend of Time or uh, <laughs> Legend of Zelda: uh, Link to the Past. Okay, okay. And this game draws a lot of inspiration from like old top-down 2D Zeldas. Um, so I, th- I thought it was more of an action game. So you see, it really there's, is. there's exploration it really and stuff is. with it. There, there is. There's a, uh, a a big part of the game is, is going around the world trying to find these different like nodes that usually are at the end of dungeons. Um, if you were to break uh, here, let me let me illustrate you uh, an example of why I like this game so much. Um, if you look at Legend of Zelda, you can break it down into two major parts, okay? There's, like, puzzle solving in the dungeons, and then there's, like, combat, right? So you get new items that let you do new attacks to fight different kinds of enemies, all right? And then in the dungeons, you're you're doing all these, like, kind of, uh, like, these spatial reasoning puzzles and stuff to, to, to get through to the other side to fight the boss, okay? In Legend of Zelda... The the puzzle aspect is is more important is is a little heavier than the combat aspect. Okay, right. and and the combat in Link to the Past was actually like my biggest like gripe with that game. Like it just felt really clunky. It felt really kind of unpolished. And I, I know that maybe that sounds really weird to Zelda fans because nobody really goes into a Zelda game looking for oh, and Zelda, for there's, combat. There's really no reason for you to use any of the items or weapons that you pick up. Right. But like even even combat, like it's so it's so like grid based where where you get into these weird situations where like it seems like you should be hitting an enemy, but just because their their sprites aren't matching up just right, it's like a whiff and then you take damage and it's really frustrating hyperlight drifter has the same basic components to it like there's a little bit of exploration and puzzle solving and there's a lot of combat though okay and the combat is stylish as fuck dude like it is super fucking fun it all revolves around using a sword and a gun and hitting enemies with your sword puts ammunition in your gun um so, so you have this this interplay between like close range and long range combat. You're also really weak, but highly mobile. So that makes combat super super fast. Unlike you know, in, in Legend of Zelda, you're never like dashing around and like kill one enemy, prioritize another enemy. Like like you don't have to do that like prior to prioritization of combat as much as you do in Hyper Life Drifter, which I really enjoy. It's it That's kind of like the element that people have been comparing to, like, Dark Souls. You know, you really have to think about every combat encounter to get out of it alive. Plus, it has a great soundtrack. It looks cool as fuck. It's like this really weird, kind of twisted sci-fi tale, which is right up my alley. So that's why Hyper Life Drifter is my number 10 for 2016. Let's talk about another game. How about number nine? Super hot. Super hot. Oh, you you almost uh, left me hanging, dude. I'm sorry. I, I thought you were going <laughs> to keep going. We should, Let's just do that for a couple minutes. Super hot. 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 Okay. So, super hot. Um, did you, you play this game, right? I played it. I played a little bit of the free prototype because um, this was like a this was like a game jam game originally. I, yeah, played, yeah. I played that one, and then I played about 
the Death Maybe Note. Fifteen minutes of the full, the full run. I like it though. It's really cool. Uh, the the main the main mechanic of the game is really inventive, and again makes for some real like cinematic, like cool, badass action movie type combat scenes. Like like the uh, like there's a there's a level that takes place in an elevator. It's like three dudes with guns pointed at you in an elevator, and you have to like dodge all their guns and kill all of them in like the space of like yeah, five I, seconds. I, I like how it, at the end of every level it plays out what you did in real time without Right, the without the pausing. Yeah. And you can like something that you thought was gonna look that you thought was gonna look really clumsy, it, it, yeah. it ends up looking pretty good. Yeah, like when you're playing it it feels real like okay it feels really incremental. It's like start and then stop. Okay, and then I move over here and then I go and then I stop and then I move like this. And it, it feels it feels much more strategic than it ends up looking in the final playthrough. In the final playthrough, it looks like fucking John Wick or something. He's like running down a hallway just dodging bullets and murdering people. Like it is so, so fucking slick. And the, the narrative device they use for the game, like to to kind of frame the whole thing where it's like like people on some... It's a computer yeah, game. Yeah, like it, right? yeah, it's like it's a computer game in a computer game. It's like a people in this network are like sharing this this leaked game that like uh, it, it has it has implications that I don't really want to get into. You should just play the game. It doesn't take very long to get through the main campaign. It's like, I don't know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, something like that. Really? Maybe an hour. It's it's not long. But once you beat the main campaign, it unlocks a bunch of, uh, like, challenge modes that, that have different criteria to them. So, like, there will be ones that are all, like, like you have to do all the levels but only using a katana. Which, you know, the game is a shooter, so a lot of the times you're, like, you're kind of relying on the range of a pistol to kill a guy before he gets to you. So, switching that up and using katana is pretty interesting. There's a bunch of, there's a bunch of other ones. I think that's, like, the first challenge mode. But if you haven't played the full game, Carlos... I highly, highly recommend it because it was like my ninth favorite game this year. Your ninth favorite game. My this ninth year? favorite. That's game. why it's number nine. You know what my eighth favorite game this year was? I know because I'm looking at your screen. You're looking. But at tell the... us what it is. Okay, it was Firewatch. You want me to tell you about Firewatch? Please I'll tell you talk, about Firewatch. Talk to me about Firewatch. I I read the Wikipedia for Firewatch and I read the whole plot and I thought it was really dumb. Well. It's not necessarily the plot that's like I mean the plot is what it is. It's kind of like it's kind of a big misdirect. What what is what I think is the true triumph of Firewatch is actually in the voice performance. It's actually the actors. Like the the performances are incredibly well done. The 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 main character, I don't remember what the guy's name is. I don't remember, I I probably should have looked that up before we started. Um but he plays, uh, I know he plays Harry Crane on Mad Men. I don't know if you've ever seen Mad Men. I love that show. Um, but the whole game is basically told through his conversations with the, with the female character who's like in the main Firewatch command post tower. And it's all just like their radio conversations back and forth. And the relationship that kind of forms between them over the course of the summer. And dude, like, <sighs> I, 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 maybe I'm one of the only, like, maybe I'm one of the only people in the world that wasn't disappointed by the kind of lack of twist in this game. Like, they do kind of set up some plot threads throughout the game that you might think lead in some really weird gonzo out there situations. Um, and, and none of them really ever kind of pan out the way you're expecting them to. And then the game kind of just has this really, like, grounded, somber, like, emotional end to it. Um, but dude, I was a fucking wreck by the time I finished that game. I don't know what it was. Like I just loved it. It just, it just, it got to me. It got to me right, right here, right in the field bone. It got to me. I, I think you should give it a try, Carlos. I already did. I you read the, the week. <laughs> yeah, I used the power of my imagination. I read it on Wikipedia. Dude, because I'm a gangster, and okay. gangsters love to read. No, I know that. I know that. I know that. But I think maybe at some point you should. Give it a whirl. Maybe when it goes on Steam sale in a few years and it's like five bucks, then it'll be right right up your alley. I'll think about it. Okay, okay. Number seven. Oh! Pony Island. Did you play Pony Island? Yes, I did, and I love Pony Island. Okay, let's actually. talk about Pony it was, Island. It was on my list, but I had to remove it in favor of other uh, better games. Better games, <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Ten, ten better games yeah, than that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I, I think Pony Island was fantastic. I don't know what to say about Pony Island. What do you say about this game? It's so spoilery. Um, like there's like it's not a very long game, and you can't really get too deep into it without completely ruining the experience. I feel like. Would you agree? Yeah, it's completely agree. I mean, it's it's another one of those games like Super Hot, where like the whole the whole hook of it is that you're playing a game inside of a game, but like the setting of where you're playing that game is very <laughs> is very much central to like the yeah. uh, the. I would, I would twist like to say that I, I would know. like to say that the way the game plays with you. Yeah, I never found it genuinely creepy or scary or anything like that it was more interesting than anything because it's very self-contained it yeah it it, it does it does it, it's not like a it's not like i'm scared where like you're kind of worried that like any day now you're just gonna start seeing like weird files popping up in your directory like it's like fucking with you in in really obtuse ways outside of the game but it does fuck with you in the game and there was there was a couple uh there's a couple of like distractions it throws at you that like I didn't quite understand what was happening at the time, and then when I, you know, when I realized what was happening, it, it was it was it was a very cool rel- revelatory experience to be like, wow, I didn't even I, I never would have even thought that a game could do that, you know? Yeah. Like I don't know, like you get into a staring contest with a character on screen, and it works, and, yeah, like- and it works, and like when they set it up, you're sitting there thinking like, well. You get a fucking staring contest with a screen. Like, this is just... You, you want me to pretend like this is happening. Like, okay, fine, whatever. We'll play along with it. But then it, it ends up throwing some twists and some tricks at you that you aren't expecting, and it and it works, I feel like. Don't you? Yeah. So, let's not let's not waste too much time on this game, because this really is... Of, of everything on the list, I think Pony Island is one that you really just need to go into not knowing anything. Um, so don't look at any of this footage you're watching right now, <laughs> or that you've already watched. Just forget it all. Go play Pony Island. It's not very expensive. Do you know how much it costs? It's like four bucks. Yeah, it's like four bucks. Just go play it. It'll take maybe two hours of your life. Look, just do it. Okay, now I've been really excited to talk to you personally, Carlos, about number six, which is... Titanfall 2. Titanfall 2. Talk to me about Titanfall, Carlos. See, I know, I know all you dweebs on the podcast have been like nerding out about the single player and shit. And I'm, and I'm, I know it's good and Dude, I the single player is like great. It, but I'm tired of people talking about it. I want people to talk about the multiplayer because that's kind of the main draw of the game. Okay. And everywhere else, people are just like, oh man, you get to, you get to this bump a robot and shit. I don't give a fuck, dude. Yeah, I know, but like, that's kind of what. If, if I hadn't had that hook to, like, to, to get me to play the game, I probably wouldn't have experienced the multiplayer. And you're right, the multiplayer. And you know what? That, that same thing happened to me, too, because I was kind of put off by the multiplayer at first. But I decided to keep playing the game uh, just to finish the single player, which is very enjoyable. Right. And I guess I stuck with the game long enough that I was willing willing, yeah. willing to give the multiplayer another try, yeah, and that's when I became really up to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think the I think the multiplayer does something really well that like a lot of modern AAA shooter campaigns maybe don't do in that it delivers a lot of really good um, gameplay mechanics. It, it delivers them kind of in a in a quick succession. You'll do like a mission that's like okay, this mission's based around this mechanic. This mission's based around this mechanic. You know, so on and so forth. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't outstay its welcome. You know, yeah. like when I'm playing like. Halos and Call of Duties, like, and, and this is coming from somebody who used to be a tremendous Halo fan. Like, I used to love Halo, but those campaigns, like, by the time you get to the end of it, it was kind of just like, okay, I've blown up everybody now. Like, guess it's over. Titanfall. Some people might look at it as a, as a, uh, as a negative that the campaign really isn't that long. But honestly, I think I think it's the perfect length for a game like that. I think it's 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 nice and consumable without being overbearing and without like detracting from the multiplayer which i mean yeah. has always been the point of titanfall i mean the first game didn't even have a campaign it was only multiplayer yeah a couple of the mechanics that it introduces during the single player uh 
right when you start to worry that, man, am I going to have to be doing this for the whole game? Yeah, it, it just, goes away. It just drops it completely. Yeah, it just drops it. Um, I would have kind of liked to see some of those mechanics like brought back later in like maybe like a boss fight or something. Well, no, like 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 introduce one mechanic and then introduce another mechanic and then introduce a way to synergize those two. Like like make me use both of them at the same time kind of thing. You know, like it's I, it's, I don't it's think, difficult I don't think, to I don't think that works for an action game like this where you're supposed to just keep going all the time because that would just kind of like yeah. stop you for a sec. It would. While you're trying to figure it out. But god damn that one, that one power. You know the one I'm talking the about. The one you're talking about. The one I'm talking about. Wing, wing, notch, notch. Oh, man, it's so good. Seriously, you should play this game. Spoil, spoil the game, dog. What, what is it? It's like time travel? Time travel. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah you're jumping back in time and forward. Oh, and yeah. That, a lot of games do time travel. And a lot of games have a lot of different ideas about how you would express that gameplay-wise. Uh, Titanfall 2 did it in a very action-oriented way that made you feel like a, a really like made you feel really cool made made you think like if somebody if somebody was like a was was a was a fighter who could travel through time how would they use that to their advantage this is exactly how it would, how it would work you know you can also you can also use it in multiplayer you can face out into an alternate reality That's and if really the other if the other player you're fighting also has a loadout they can face out and they can phase into your they can reality, phase into reality. That is fucking cool. That's really cool. Let's get on with it. Number five, Quadrilateral Cowboy. Carlos. I did not play this game, and I'm really ashamed of it, because it looks really cool. Everything I hear about it sounds really cool, and I'm a big fan of other Blendo games. It it, it has the Blendo charm in spades. It is, it is very much... Everything that was really cool about Thirty Flights of Loving and uh, Gravity Bone, I never played Flotilla, so I can't really speak to that one. But this game, above all those others, is actually like it has more game. Is a game, yeah. It's actually a game that you do things in, and you have objectives and missions, and, and you complete those objectives, and then you move on to the next one. It, it's a it's, it's a much more. Um, how shall I put this? Accessible game for you know, like more traditional. I wouldn't say that's the right word. I mean, engaging. Engaging. Is probably the word okay, engaging. Word. Yeah, exactly. You're doing more instead of just like walk forward. I mean, don't get me wrong. Gravity Bone, Thirty Flights of Loving were fantastic little like interactive story experiences. Um, but it's kind of nice to see that same level of talent and enthusiasm put towards something that actually has a system to it, that actually has gameplay to it. And the gameplay system at work in Quadrilateral Cowboy is, in and of itself, exceedingly cool. Like, just the whole idea of, like, the the, the 80s, 90s, like, uh, fucking, what would you call that? Like, Technopunk? What do they call that? Cyberpunk. cyberpunk. Like cyberpunk. Like hacker. You've got the fucking... You've got your little deck that you just like flop down on the counter. Flip open your deck on the counter. There you go. And uh, and you just like fucking hack shit. It's like, oh, the security camera? Hack it. Oh, you got a briefcase that turns into an automatic sniper rifle. You can fucking program it with your briefcase to shoot at certain intervals. Like, I don't know. It's... Oh, man. This game... It's... It, it's got so much fucking charm and style just oozing out of it. Um, every single like piece of equipment that they give you throughout the game is really unique. Works works very well towards like the puzzle solving aspects of the game. Um, same kind of thing with Titanfall, but maybe more so here in Quadrilateral Cowboy. I would have liked it more if there was like a big wrap up at the end where you actually were. Like using, like you had to use all the different gadgets and all the different like hacking abilities that you kind of developed over the course of the game in unison to like perform one big heist. Um, it doesn't really wrap up like that. They kind of introduce a mechanic in one level and then they kind of shelve it, and you don't really go back to it. And then by the end of the game, you're doing you're doing um, like I don't even remember exactly how it worked, but you were doing this really weird thing where you were actually controlling three different people, like, in the course of a heist, and they all had their own specialties and their own abilities. It, it was really, really neat, but it was just really different from everything that had preceded that. But even so, like, I mean, this game, again, I, I, let me see what my Steam time on it. Yeah, you can complete the whole thing, like, in about six hours, I think. 
but it's definitely fucking worth it. And, Carlos, you might like this. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's $20. I thought it was a little cheaper than that, but... Carlos, put it on your wish list. Pick it up on a Steam sale. I think you'll enjoy it. This when, this might be a game. Can't wait for 2020. Dude, there it is. Number four. Play Dead's Inside. Did you play this? I love this game. Wasn't it great? Yeah, it's great. Dude. Mm. What can you say? And you know what? After playing Inside, I actually went back to replay Limbo. Yeah. Too, because I kind of wanted to have more of that style of game. Right. And I, fi- I found the puzzles in Inside to maybe be a little clever in that they're, they seem to be more accessible. There, there was a surprising, like array of different puzzles i mean when you look at this game being played by somebody else like in in like little clips and snippets it doesn't look like there's much going on in terms of gameplay like it doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on but but there are a lot of really interesting puzzles like especially later in the game when you're like moving through some well i'll avoid spoilers here but you're moving through some very like bizarre kind of industrial areas um like like do you remember there was a puzzle with like the blast door you have to use as a shield as you're walking by right. there's like one area where there's these like intermittent blasts and and you have this door that's a shield that you that you rely on to get you across these areas and then later on they give you a door that isn't connected on the bottom track so it becomes like a much less effective shield and it's all about positioning it behind railing so that it'll remain sturdy enough to take the blast for you like there's there's a lot of like interesting little things like that going on the swimming levels you remember those yeah where there's like the fucking long haired what even was that yeah like a fucking water hag like chasing you and they give you just enough time to kind of swim under all the obstacles and resurface on the other side before she gets you like that shit ah that shit fucking stuck with me the ending of that game too is another just like absolute out of left field what the fuck mind fuck i i don't know what it is i mean the gameplay isn't i don't i don't know what it is i really I don't, like I don't about think this it's game. supposed to be like a concise thing i think it's just meant to be somewhat just is yeah it just kind of is its own thing it, it's a lovely game really fucking weird but not overbearing you know it's there's something to take away from it. If you haven't if you haven't played it, please please do me a favor. And some point in 2017, check it out. Number three. Let it die. Surely you played this game, Carlos. I played I played Let It Die up until when you actually start playing Let It Die, and that's when I stopped playing Let It Die. That that doesn't take very long though. It's like I really enjoyed those ten minutes. But then once you got to the actual game and there was all these stat screens and all these things that got really confusing, I just can't deal with But that's with what that. I love. That's what I love. I don't know. The, the whole... I like the, I like the skeleton, the skateboard. I like the arcade. <laughs> I like the one girl that comes up when you die. All that stuff. All that style is really cool. But yeah. then when I look at it, the, the, the fucking nurse playing it, like, oh, man, look at the item I got. He's got plus 5 to 0.5% in the thing. And then, but you can only use it once. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think we're just gonna disagree on this one, Carlos, because I think the I think the uh, the sort of innate dirty little min maxer in me really enjoys that kind of stuff. You know, I, I like the I like the dungeon crawl. You know what I really do like though, the way they handle your stamina. Oh, like the little heart inside your character dude, that I gets redder. I I don't know what it is, but like something about like X rays of like beating hearts inside people like really wigs me out. Like, really bothers me. Like, when I'm playing that game, and my character starts, like, running, and, like, her like her heart's beating faster and faster and faster, like, it, it fucking, like... Oh, it's like body horror to me. I don't Christy, know. I don't a, know what it is. There's a beating heart inside you. I know there is, but I don't look at it. I don't look at it every can, day. You can feel it. I can feel it. I don't want to feel it, but I can feel it. I wish I didn't have a heart. Do you want my heart, Carlos? I already have your heart, baby. Oh, Carlos... <laughs> <laughs> Let it die. I, you know, I feel like this is probably on everybody's list. So a lot of people, it's including Brad, it's free. You should just go play it. Brad's probably going to explain this game a lot better than I can, and it's, I don't know, like, it's just it's, fuck, man. Just go play it. I don't even care. Just play. It. 
Number two, Carlos. This is another one. I put this on here just for you. Let me ask you just some for you, baby. Let me ask just you for you, baby. What, what game is this? What game is this? Number two. My second favorite game of 2016 was Four. Darkest Dungeon. Let me ask you something before we get into further discussion. Are you going to ask me how many hours I played? Yes. Okay. Well, I was going to ask you something else, but sure, let me hear those. Okay. Well. Darkest Dungeon. Oh, I don't I actually own it. I've just been playing off of Brad's copy. But I have logged... 19 hours. Okay, it's not crazy. It's not, like, I get it. Shut up. Shut up, Carlos. My second, I have a life. My second question <laughs> is, have you beaten the Darkest Dungeon? No, fuck that. Fucking poser. Fucking no, That's dude. cool, neither have I. Dude, it's, it's so fucking Neither fun. have I, and I have more than maybe 150 hours of Darkest Dungeon. Dude, it's ridiculous. 150? Yeah. Wow. Monsters well, I, I put... I've put 19 hours in and I don't even own the game. I probably should just fucking bite the bullet and buy it at some point, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Let me tell you what, something. Why is it so good, though? Is it like. It's like FTL meets like a dungeon crawling turn based RPG? With Mike Magnolia? Is, is that. Style? Is, yeah, well, the, yeah, the Mike Magnolia influence is very, very strong and it works exceedingly well for this kind of uh, dark gothic horror fantasy that they're going with that and the and the and the uh, the narrator is also just fucking top notch i wonder if there's <laughs> like i know i know there's mods for this game i wonder if you, you can download like narrator packs why would you? I don't know, because you know, you know how they... To replace the narrative? You know how they release, like, a In Snoop Dogg voice for, like, navigation systems? Yeah. Dude, I would I would love to have Snoop Dogg it's narrate like, yo, dog, in time you shall know the grand extent of my failings, yo. <laughs> like, whoa. That's ridiculous. That's the best I could do on Snoop Dogg. I'm very, very sorry that you had to hear that. Um... I mean, is it a good game, though? I know it you is. played a bunch of it, but, like... It is. I think it does some really interesting things with the party position and movement system, in yeah. which your characters have to be in a specific position to use their skills well, and how you can use skills to move the enemy party around to prevent them from using their skills, and how your characters can also get moved around. Right. And how you deal with that. It's not just it's not just turn order, but also, like, physical position is very important to the combat. Yeah, and I, don't, I haven't seen a lot of games deal with that. I think it's a really cool mechanic. It is a really cool mechanic. You know, one of my, like, one of my deepest, darkest, secretest fears is, like, losing an arm, you know? Maybe. Like, if I ever lost an arm, I, I would be fucked, and, like... Like, the first thing that always comes to mind when I think about it is, like, well, I just wouldn't be able to play video games anymore. Like, I couldn't play fucking Dark Souls anymore. I couldn't play Overwatch. I couldn't play anything that I play anymore. But if that did happen, I would always have Darkest Dungeon. You can always play that with, with two fingers. One finger. Not even. You, you can, can play, play with that with nose. your nose. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would probably just become, like, a really hardcore Darkest Dungeon and FTL player. That's probably what I would do if I lost an arm. If I lost both arms. Yeah, Darkest I Dungeon is kind of my de facto airport game. Right? Yeah, right. you can just play it on a touchpad. Beautiful. It's beautiful, it's, it's beautiful design. Still poisoned. Wonderfully the deep game. Still blocked, but less people will be eaten. My number one most famous favorite game of 2016 is probably going to catch me a bit of shit from Carlos, but you know what? I'm ready to have this discussion with you. Let's talk about it. You're everything that's wrong with my number one game this year is Overwatch. What's up? You know, rather than talk shit about Overwatch, which I think I've done enough, probably not. I just want to say that I don't own Overwatch and all my friends play Overwatch and I want to play Overwatch with my friends because... I like playing games with my friends. So when Overwatch had a free weekend, I was like, cool, I'm going to get to play Overwatch with Crispy. And Crispy was always too busy to play Overwatch with me. It was a bad weekend for me, Carlos. I'm sorry. I have a lot of stuff going on. I know. I know. I'm fucking dead. I'll never forget. So this isn't about... This isn't about Overwatch. This is about me being a bad friend. So so you're saying if I maybe had played with you on that free weekend, you might actually like this game? I still wouldn't like it. You still would like this game. I love this game. It's fucking fantastic. I don't. I, it's, it's, dude, some, it's some kind of like little tyke slash Fisher Price ah, shooter, dude. You're 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 letting the art style throw you. It's not it's not just the art style. It's 
the fact that there's no deaths. I mean, uh, Titanfall 2 also has no deaths on the leaderboard. But there's no deaths. Like anytime someone dies, even if you didn't. Let that the that final is a big. Shot, that is a big point. Like they don't. They don't count like KD ratios at all. Hardly. Like it's it, like you can you can earn gold medals for eliminations or like objective kills, but they don't they don't really keep track of like how many how many like they don't keep track of your KD. They they will give you credit for kills that you contributed to, but didn't necessarily land the final blow. In fact, the 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 kill feed up in the top of the screen isn't really isn't really gauging who's killing who so much as who's delivering the final blow. Yeah. Who, who. And it, it's understandable with the with the you know purpose that some classes have. Well, I mean, it, like you've got you've got characters like Mercy running around who like healing or that one dude. With Great Mercies shield. would probably know. Well, yeah, Reinhardt. Like they they probably deal very little, if any, damage whatsoever. Like they wouldn't deal anything. I I think I think I think all of that was was a well thought out approach to focus the game towards teamwork. And, and and working as a unit instead of like, it, <laughs> dude, you, this game already has a problem with people not playing through the objective, just running around trying to get kills all the time. You know, while the payload just sits there and doesn't move. So if you had if you had people score like keeping track of their KDs and shit like that, like nothing would ever get done. You know, none none of the objectives would ever happen. You wouldn't capture any points. You wouldn't move any payloads. And to me. Objective-based multiplayer games are infinitely more engaging than run around, shoot people, rack up kill. Yeah, that's true. Sort of multiplayers, you know. I'm just glad they decided to more life server low with Harambe. With his own character. Yeah. I'm gonna cut a lot of this. It's a pretty good uh, source filmmaker Overwatch movie. You seen them? Well, it's another great year of video games behind us. I'd like to thank Carlos for helping me out with my video this year, and I'd like to thank you guys, the community, for hanging around, being supportive, and just being generally awesome people. Here's to a wonderful 2017. I can't wait, and I'll see y'all later.